The Odessa is an American codename from the German, Organisation der Ehemaligen SS Anthorigen, meaning, Organization of Former SS Members coined in 1946 for a possible Nazi underground escape plan at the end of World War II by a group of SS officers with the aim of facilitating secret escape routes. The idea has been widely circulated in fictional spy novels and movies, notably Frederick Forsyth's best-selling 1972 thriller The Odessa File. The routes are also called ratlines. The goal was to allow the SS members to escape to Argentina, Brazil, or the Middle East under false passports. This goal was in fact achieved by 300 Nazis with support from Juan Perón after he came to power in Argentina in 1946. Though an unknown number of wanted Nazis and war criminals did in fact escape Europe, the existence of an organization called Odessa is rejected by most experts. However it is widely accepted that there were escape organizations for Nazis, UKI Gonyi maintains that archival evidence paints a picture that does not even include an organization actually named Odessa, but it is sinister nonetheless, and weighted in favor of an actual organized escape network. Guy Walters, in his 2009 book Hunting Evil, stated he was unable to find any evidence of the existence of the Odessa network as such, although numerous other organizations such as Consul, Scharnhorst, Sexgestern, Liebwasch, and Lustige Bruder have been named, including Die Spin, the Spider, run in part by Hitler's commando chief Otto Skorzeny. Historian Daniel Stahl in his 2011 essay stated that the consensus among historians is that an organization called Odessa did not actually exist. UKI Goni's book, The Real Odessa, describes the role of Juan Perón in providing cover for Nazi war criminals with cooperation from the Vatican, the Argentinian government and the Swiss authorities through a secret office set up by Perón's agents in Bern. Heinrich Himmler's Secret Service had prepared an escape route in Madrid in 1944. In 1946, this operation moved to the Presidential Palace in Buenos Aires. Goni states that the operation stretched from Scandinavia to Italy, aiding war criminals and bringing in gold that the Croatian Treasury had stolen. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Origins of the term. The code word Odessa, as used by the Allies, appeared for the first time in a memo dated July 3, 1946, by the American Counterintelligence Corps (CIC), whose principal role was to screen displaced persons for possible suspects. The CIC discovered that the word Odessa was used at the KZ Bensheim Auerbach internment camp for SS prisoners who used this watchword in their secret attempts to gain special privileges from the Red Cross, wrote historian Guy Walters. Neither the Americans nor the British were able to verify the claims extending any further than that. History According to Simon Wiesenthal, the Odessa was set up in 1944 to aid fugitive Nazis. However, a documentary produced by the German TV station ZDF also suggested that the Odessa was never the single worldwide secret organization that Wiesenthal described, but several organizations, both overt and covert, that helped ex-SS men. The truth may have been obscured by antagonism between the Wiesenthal organization and West German military intelligence. It is known that Austrian authorities were investigating the organization several years before Wiesenthal went public with his information. Similarly, historian Gitta Sereny wrote in her 1974 book Into That Darkness, based on interviews with the former commandant of the Treblinka extermination camp, Franz Stangl, that an organization called Odessa had never existed although there were Nazi aid organizations. The prosecutors at the Ludwigsburg Central Authority for the Investigation into Nazi Crimes, who know precisely how the post-war lives of certain individuals now living in South America have been financed, have searched all their thousands of documents from beginning to end, but say they are totally unable to authenticate the Odessa. Not that this matters greatly, there certainly were various kinds of Nazi aid organizations after the war. It would have been astonishing if there hadn't been. This view is supported by historian Guy Walters in his book Hunting Evil, where he also points out that networks were used, but there was not such a thing as a set-up network covering Europe and South America, with an alleged war treasure. For Walters, the reports received by the Allied intelligence services during the mid-1940s suggest that the appellation, Odessa, was little more than a catch-all term used by former Nazis who wished to continue the fight. 
Nazi concentration camp supervisors denied the existence of an organization called Odessa. The U.S. War Crimes Commission reports and the American OSS neither confirmed nor denied claims about the existence of such an organization. Wexberg, who after emigrating to the United States had served as an OSS officer and member of the U.S. War Crimes Commission, however, claimed that in interviews of outspoken German anti-Nazis some asserted that plans were made for a Fourth Reich before the fall of the Third, and that this was to be implemented by reorganizing in remote Nazi colonies overseas. The Nazis decided that the time had come to set up a worldwide clandestine escape network. They used Germans who had been hired to drive U.S. Army trucks on the Autobahn between Munich and Salzburg for the Stars and Stripes, the American Army newspaper. The couriers had applied for their jobs under false names, and the Americans in Munich had failed to check them carefully. The Odessa was organized as a thorough, efficient network. Anlaufstellen ports of call were set up along the entire Austro-German border. In Lindau, close to both Austria and Switzerland, the Odessa set up an «export-import» company with representatives in Cairo and Damascus. In his interviews with Sereny, Stengel denied any knowledge of a group called the Odessa. Recent biographies of Adolf Eichmann, who also escaped to South America, and Heinrich Himmler, the alleged founder of the Odessa, made no reference to such an organization. However, Hannah Arendt, in her book, Eichmann in Jerusalem, states that in 1950, Eichmann succeeded in establishing contact with Odessa, a clandestine organization of SS veterans, and in May of that year, he was passed through Austria to Italy, where a priest, fully informed of his identity, equipped him with a refugee passport in the name of Richard Clement and sent him on to Buenos Aires. Notorious Auschwitz Dr. Joseph Mengele also escaped to Brazil. Sereny attributed the escape of SS members to post war chaos and the inability of the Catholic Church, the Red Cross, and the American military to verify the claims of people who came to them for help, rather than to the activities of an underground Nazi organization. She identified a Vatican official, Bishop Alois Hudel, not former SS men, as the principal agent in helping Nazis leave Italy for South America, mainly Brazil. Of particular importance in examining the post-war activities of high-ranking Nazis was Paul Manning's book Martin Bormann, Nazi in Exile, which detailed Bormann's rise to power through the Nazi party and as Hitler's chief of staff. During the war, Manning himself was a correspondent for CBS News in London, and his reporting and subsequent researches presented Bormann's cunning and skill in the organization and planning for the flight of Nazi-controlled capital from Europe during the last years of the war. Notwithstanding the strong possibility of Bormann's death in Berlin on 1 May 1945, especially in light of DNA identification of skeletal remains unearthed near the Lehrter Bahnhof as Bormann's. According to Manning, "...eventually, over 10,000 former German military made it to South America along escape routes set up by the Odessa and the Deutsche Hilfsverein." Page 181. The Odessa itself was incidental, says Manning, with the continuing existence of the Bormann organization a much larger and more menacing fact. None of this had yet been convincingly proven. In popular culture In the realm of fiction, Frederick Forsyth's best-selling 1972 thriller The Odessa File brought the organization to popular attention. The novel was turned into a film starring John Voight. In the novel, Forsyth's Odessa smuggled war criminals to South America, but also attempted to protect those SS members who remained behind in Germany, and plotted to influence political decisions in West Germany. Many of the novel's readers assumed that Odessa really existed. In the 1976 thriller novel by Ira Levin titled The Boys from Brazil, Dr. Joseph Mengele, the concentration camp medical doctor who performed horrific experiments on camp victims during World War II, is involved in Odessa. According to a young man and spy on his trail, Mengele is activating the Cameradin work. For a strange assignment, he is sending out six Nazis former SS officers to kill 94 men, who share a few common traits. In the book the terms, work and Odessa, are used interchangeably. It was mentioned in three Phoenix Force novels, Ultimate Terror 1984, The Twisted Cross 1986, and Terror in the Dark 1987. It was also mentioned, sometimes in veiled terms, in Philip Kerr's 2006 novel, The One from the Other 
one of Kerr's Bernie Gunther mysteries. Novelist Eric Frattini has emphasized his belief in Odessa and incorporates elements in his novels, such as the 2010 thriller, The Mephistos Gold, The First Order. The main antagonists from the Star Wars sequel trilogy were based on the concept of Odessa, in particular the theory that several Nazis escaped into Argentina. Bormann's survival and the Ratline are also part of the History Channel TV series Hunting Hitler, 2015 to 2018, in which former CIA agent Bob Baer, Gerard Williams, author of Grey Wolf, The Escape of Adolf Hitler and Tim Kennedy, a former member of the 7th Special Forces Group of the U.S. Army, tried to prove that Hitler might have survived WW2 and fled to Argentina, Odessa and another secret society was mentioned in Terry Hayes' novel I Am Pilgrim. In the novel, the main character, disguised as an FBI agent in Damascus, is searching for a secret passage and encounters an underground tunnel with German inscribing on a tunnel wall. Names of SS military personnel involved with the construction of the tunnel are listed. See also David Emery Die Spin Nazi Gold Operation Paperclip OSI Seat 12 Side CIS, a secret FBI intelligence agency operating in South America during and immediately after World War II Ratlines Notes